He was a hometown hero, a prominent surgeon who dedicated his life to helping others. After he did his year of combat surgery in Afghanistan, we were both attending surgeons for a combat support hospital in Seoul. Then one day, he exits out the south doors and walks over to Monroe at 5.34 in the morning. The doctor wasn't there. I got a phone call from a nurse uh, saying that he hadn't shown for work. That's how we say in surgery residency, you don't call in sick, you call in dead. Disturbing theories. Uh, it could be a baton, it could be a flashlight. Unsettling clues. I'm going to start extracting data from it. And a desperate race for answers to the question, what happened to Dr. John Marshall? I am having my own personal holocaust. Susan and John Marshall met in medical school, and a bond developed over saving lives. He liked taking care of the vets. Um, so that, that's always the best part about being a surgeon is the patients. Both would go on to make careers out of service, traveling the world through the military before ending up together in Korea, where they would start a family. We were there for four years, where we adopted our two kids. And then we came back to the United States. I will use my sword. You use your wand. And his daughter, Ellie, writes to her dad regularly in her diary. Dear Zaddy, I love you and we miss you. We always said we are Marshall. I mean, it was the four of us. You would say that as a family? We, we are Marshall? Oh, that's our slogan. Then John would say, what do Marshalls say? Do Marshalls quit? No. What do Marshalls say? We can do it. And we do it together. And that's the way it works. But then, the morning that would tear the Marshalls apart. It started before sunrise with John's routine trip to the gym before a jog along the Spokane River. 531, he heads over to his locker here, or to his cubbyhole where he's placed his backpack. That's him in the grain? Mm hmm And he's apparently putting on his jacket, and he appeared to be at the locker for a couple minutes. So he's basically getting dressed and ready for his what's going to be a pretty cold run outdoors. Correct. And then proceeds to these stairs, and you can see him put his earphones in at this point. He exits out the south doors and walks over to Monroe at 534 in the morning, and that is the last time we saw him in, in the facility. John, now the chief of surgery at Washington's VA hospital, was scheduled to operate two hours later, but never arrived. Nearly four hours after that, John's wife gets the call. For him to be three and a half hours late to work is significant. Susan goes to police, but doesn't feel they share her sense of urgency, so she assembles her own search party. There's kind of a little encampment down there with trash, and I went through all of that, and I, I looked under all the bushes, and I looked for any traces that someone had fallen down. I called the VA police, and I called John's department, and I said, you guys got to come out and, and look for John with me. As news spread that one of the city's most renowned lifesavers is missing, police go to work. By nightfall, the fourth generation Marine and father of two is still missing. In near freezing conditions, police are forced to suspend their search. Just how difficult was that first night for you as a family? I don't remember too much. And um, it was hard to get into that bed. And I just thought, I just thought he's cold. He's cold. He's somewhere and he's cold. Then the next morning, a morning the marshals will never forget. I got a phone call from the detective saying that they thought they had his body. I picked up the kids, my sister and I, and then told them. And then we went to the river. Dr. Marshall is found up against a rock in the icy waters of the Spokane River. We should have been there with him. You shouldn't die like that. And for such a wonderful man, husband and father. Strangely, it's the exact spot where wife Susan started her search the day before. It's almost as though you were, you were drawn here. I guess. I, I wanted to find him. I wanted, I wanted to be the one to find him because, um, because he was mine. Despite police initially declaring the doctor's death suspicious, an autopsy finds the cause to be asphyxiation by drowning, and the case is ruled an accident. 
One of the best theories about what happened to Dr. Marshall as he jogged along this river is that he simply fell. But how then could it have taken 27 hours for him to be found? Well, police say it's possible he circulated in one of these eddies, almost as though in a washing machine, before eventually surfacing downstream. But his wife believes John's death is far more sinister and says she's not alone. I have never met anyone in Spokane other than law enforcement who believes it was an accident. Just tripping and falling. I, just, I, he had been in harm's way so many times and he had been in combat situations so many times. A trauma surgeon and experienced doctor herself, Susan begins reviewing the autopsy. Then something strange hits her. There are severe fractures to her husband's chest. All of his injuries are consistent with being pre-mortem. It was an interlateral blow to the chest of significant force. So that's a baseball bat, that's a block of wood, that's um, a karate kick. That blow to the sternum is a takedown maneuver. He's beaten to a pulp. There are no lacerations. There's nothing consistent with the river. How certain are you that what we're dealing with here is a crime and not an accident? 110%. You have no doubt. We have no evidence for an accident. None. Zero. And what evidence do you believe you have of a crime? We have an assault injury and we have pre-mortem injuries. That's why I say dead people don't lie. But police dismiss Susan's allegations and close the case. So she turns to Ted Pulver, a former cop with almost 40 years experience as an investigator. He claims police totally bungled the investigation, starting with a failure to check all nearby security cameras. Are you suggesting that it's possible that some critical evidence might have been basically missed? Very probable. Some of the cameras would have at least shown where Dr. Marshall was jogging uh, or intercepted while he was jogging. You believe someone was laying in wait for him and this was a planned attack? Uh, likely two people. Then this shocker. Pulver says the condition of the doctor's body proves he did not spend 27 hours in the violent Spokane River. So what you're, you're saying, Ted, is that this was in no way an accident and instead this was a, a planned execution? Yes. Whoever killed Dr. Marshall will kill again and probably may have already killed again. Uh, so keep your eyes open. Coming up, a key piece of evidence that could show the doctor didn't drown. Was there any indication of any water damage in the body of the device there? And could there be a connection to another mysterious death linked to the hospital just a week before? What I can say is that the way that his body was found was very, very, very suspect. 